Hey everyone, welcome back to uh, Custom Carving. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you're all doing well. So today we're gonna carve this fairy house from a log. So um, before we start, safety first, stick one of those masks on, you never know what you're gonna be breathing in. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do a quick carve. Before I get any comments, I'm not a professional videographer, so you'll have to excuse the video footage. I have worked out today how to keep my phone on landscape mode when I'm recording, so hopefully the videos will only get better. Uh, but here we go. What I've done with this log is initially I've taken my cut saw disc and I've just shaped a rough mushroom. Now I'm using a cut saw flame burr just to go around the edges um, to try and make it look a little bit more defined, a little bit like an actual mushroom. I am going to be speeding up the process throughout the video as well, so you don't have to watch nine hours of me carving with a Dremel and hopefully just going to shorten it to the bits that I think are going to be relevant. But anybody can do this, guys. So if you've ever thought about wood carving, get yourself a Dremel 4000, get yourself some burrs and just have some fun. There we go, using my uh, my famous dust extraction system, known as a paintbrush. Um, but I'm just going to change it now and put the Dremel max sanding bit on it, which is meant to be 30 times stronger than the uh, standard sanding drums. Um, so far, I've used it a few times and it seems pretty effective. It's really good at uh, removing material. Uh, seems pretty strong. These videos aren't sponsored in any way by anyone, uh, so it's just my personal view on it. But yeah, so far it seems like a good, good bit of kit to have. You'll notice that I always use my Dremel 4000 with a flex shaft. If you don't have a flex shaft, it's probably one of the best things that you can get when you're carving because it's like being able to use a pen rather than holding up the whole unit. So here we go, we're just sanding it down, getting rid of those rough cut lines. As you can see, I'm just speeding it up there for you. Um, but yeah, sanding everything down because that's what makes a difference. Here I'm just putting a, a, a bit of a a, um, a line in it where I'm wanting to create a bit of differentiation so it's not just one flat piece of wood. Again, make sure that whenever you put a cut mark in, you go all the way around it, smooth it out, otherwise you won't get the finish that you're looking for. So there we go, just changing the bit now to uh, more of a cutting bit here. And what I'm going to do is try and cut in a few few, few details for some stairs because you can't have a fairy house even if there's no stairs for anybody to get to it. So luckily in this piece of wood, um, the way that I cut it, I've got a perfect staircase waiting to be carved. So I'm just going in very thinly and carving in different layers so it looks like steps. There we go, it looks a little bit like a staircase. The more time you take on your carvings, the better they will look. So this is me just going in, making sure that any of those fluffies that are created through the, the initial carve um, are away and taking it all the way up to that, that side wall that I've created with the initial carve. There we go, it looks pretty much like a staircase, which is good. If you can picture it in your mind, you can make it happen. Just gonna change the bit now for one of these cheap diamond bits that I think I got off Amazon for about 20 quid. They're really good for smoothing out the wood. I don't think they're very good for cutting out, but they're great for smoothing out. And it saves an awful lot of time with sanding later. And if you've not got one, think about getting one of these quick release clamps as well for the, um, the flex shaft. It makes uh, it saves an awful lot of time when you're carving. So again, just gonna go over where I've carved to smoothen everything out and get rid of any fluffies that are there. There 
we go. Finished staircase. Now, again, you can't have a fairy house without a door. Um, I'm no artist, so if I can do this, anybody can do it. And all it is, is figuring out where you want it, drawing a quick outline so you know where to do your cuts. And then starting the initial cuts. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. This is just a fairy house. So whatever your imagination wants, it can be big, it can be small. Using that famous dust extraction system again, known as a paintbrush. One thing you'll learn when you start power, power carving, you create an awful lot of sand, that's sand sawdust. Just changing the burr to the Putzel Flame Burr. These things are great at removing material. I highly recommend Putzel um, bits because they last forever and they're very, very strong. So we're just going to go around the outline inside and outside to really make that door frame pop. Try and keep as close to the lines as you can. It doesn't matter if you go a bit over. This doesn't have to be perfect. So initially what we're doing here is just putting the depth that we want. Again, not changing the burr. I find it's, it's easy to just leave the flame burr for these. That's the outside line done. Now for the inside. Yeah, that's our standard door frame. Now it's important to remember, in order to make it pop, you have to get rid of the excess wood around it. And that's what you'll find when you start power carving, most of your time is actually spent on uh, this bit, which is, um, I think they call it feathering out, which is basically just going all the way around the, the, the cut marks that you've done to get rid of those cut marks and smoothing everything out. You can already start to see though, it's it's really popping off the surface now, so it gives it that 3D effect. Now, obviously you can't have a door frame without a door, so just drawing the lines in roughly where I want to cut, um, with regards to the door and to make the, I suppose, the panels of wood that create that door. I actually think the, the more uneven you can make it, the better actually with things like fairy houses. Going to change the bit now to one of these thin diamond bits. Um, I just find them quite useful for, for creating cutting in lines. One thing to remember though with these thin bits is don't press too hard because they will snap. Okay. 
again, whilst it's on there, just go around the edges to smooth everything out as well. Just going to change the bit now to one of these round cutting bits. I find it really useful for cutting in doors because if you do it at the right angle, it actually leaves a point on the lines what you created. And it looks, to me, it looks more realistic. So I'm just gonna try and stay with inside the lines. First of all, I'm just cutting out the underside of the door frame to give it, uh, again, a bit more depth and to make it pop. Now going between the lines to create each individual board. As you can see, I think it gives it a really realistic effect. one finished door. Just going to change the bit now to an even thinner one and really try and get into those edges and create a new line by going a little bit deeper. Again, I think once you've carved it, it just helps highlight it and makes it pop. That's the door and the staircase. Now for the windows, again, putting the uh, the Kutzel flame burr back on. And it's exactly the same. I've just drawn on a couple of windows and it's exactly the same as what we did with the door. It's initially, it's just cutting them in and then it's feathering away the excess wood. That's the outsides done. Now for the insides, what I do is I just go into each corner with the flame burr um, and go a little bit deeper, again, making it look like a real window. is actually sped up uh, I think eight times so again you'll realize that when you start carving these things take a lot of time I think this one all in was around about 10 hours of solid carving It's 
looking at the piece now. It's got the two windows, it's got the door, and I decided there's a bit of excess wood on the front where I actually wanted to uh, do something different. So this is my first time ever trying to carve a little squirrel climbing up the house. Again, just roughly drawing it on. I wanted it to look as if it was actually climbing up the tree, not just uh, stationary. So back with the, um, the cut saw first of all, just to cut a bit of depth. And all you're trying to do here is just create, I suppose, a bit of depth, a block that you can then refine with the smaller burrs. Now for this bit, do try and keep in the lines because you need the block to be big enough for you to actually uh, be able to work on it. Always remember when you're cutting in to feather away the wood afterwards as well. That's how you make it stand out. Now I'm just drawing in a few more details around the block so I've got a rough idea of what I want the squirrel to look like on the bar. Changing a bit now for again one of the smaller diamond ones. I think for detailed work these things are great. and just trying to get a bit more detail into the squirrel to actually make it look like a squirrel rather than just a ball. This actually ended up being the most time consuming part uh, because of the detail I wanted to get into the squirrel. Hopefully at the end you'll agree it looks something like a squirrel. There we go, it looks something like a squirrel, still needs a bit more detail, still needs a bit more depth to really make it pop. But for a first attempt, I'm pretty happy with that. Back to the, uh, the cut saw just to make it a little bit deeper so it gives me a bit more material to work on to give it more of a 3D effect. give me a lot more depth to be able to work on it and add some more details. I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out so far. Now to finish your pieces, it's always down to the sanding and to add a few more details. So this is what I ended up with. I actually managed to, to, to raise it off the wood, which I was quite happy about. 
And then with one of those tiny burrs, I actually added a fur-like texture as well, which hopefully will really pop when I uh, finish it. But no, this is the uh, the finished carving. Um, next video is going to be all about how I finish these as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, uh, please comment, like, and subscribe. And if there's anything in particular you want to see carved or how, how it's done, again, put a comment in there. I'll be happy to do a video. You'll see there on the back as well. I know it's had a bit of excess wood, so I thought I'd put an owl in there as well. So yeah, this is the finished carving. I don't know about you, but I think it looks like a fairy house and I'm pretty happy with the result from a log. So yeah, if you've not subscribed, please subscribe. It helps the channel. And thanks again for watching.